<laughs> Why do I do this every time? Every single time I think that I've turned uh, my microphone on and it turns out I haven't. Um, it's a trick of my computer, I guess. Hi! Welcome to uh, Art Streams. I, uh, yeah, so most of what I've been doing with my career, basically, um, these days I'm either drawing something that's like under contract where I can't really share previews of it before it's published, or I'm drawing hardcore smut that I also can't stream. Um, so I, I've waffled back and forth on doing a tarot deck for years and years and years and years and years. And years, and years, and years. Basically, if you are, uh, an illustrator of any sort, um, you're going to have people asking you either, uh, why don't you become a tattoo artist or why don't you draw a tarot deck? Um, sometimes both. Um, and yeah, I sort of, I, I resisted drawing a tarot deck for a long time because it is, you know, 78 cards. That's a lot of cards. It's going to, you know, I'm, I'm planning on doing one a week. Um, and that's still going to take over a year over a year and a half to draw all of them if I diligently uh, draw one a week and never ever miss a stream, um, which I can do. I think, I mean, I've been doing that with Patreon comics and, you know, very, various stuff. I can, I can do one. Um, but yeah, it was, it was always a very daunting project to begin. And uh, I just, I, I did finally realize that, you know, this would be a perfect thing to stream. This is this is something that, um, you know, I can I can do start to finish in a session probably, and it's for the most part. I mean, there there might be like occasional, like artistic nudity. Is that allowed? I'll have to find out if that's allowed. Um, there might be. <laughs> There might be certain cards that I finish up some of the, the details off stream if it turns out I can't show like nipples or anything. Because sometimes you want to have, well, you know, a little artistic nudity. I think that like, the thing about drawing like very, like more cartoony illustrative art is that nipples end up just being two circles. Um, and apparently very dangerous circles that uh can get you kicked off the I've been I've been drawing smutty art for over a decade um I am I am used to uh, essentially the blue laws of the internet um and figuring out you know where I can and can't feature cartoon nudity it's not even gonna be sexual just you know sometimes sometimes you just have a tit hanging out because that's art. That's just that's just art. Is sometimes you have a tit hanging out. Um and yeah, so I got to find out if that's allowed, but I don't think today's card is going to contain any nudity. Um it's just going to be I'm doing the magician today. Um I'm not sure if I'm going to do them all in order throughout this whole series. I'll probably skip around as I like You'll like it. Um, yeah, the thing about the thing about making art is that you don't want it to feel like a drag, and sometimes, you know, I'm not gonna force myself to do one card when I feel like doing one card for the sake of doing them in a particular order. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do all of that. Um, yeah, let's get started. So this is sort of the, the style that I'm going for with all of these cards I started doing. Um, the string title still says giving cheese to dragons. What the heck? I changed that. Alex, come in here and help me change it. I don't know how to change it. Or if you can change it on your end. Um, I don't know how to change it. Can you please change it for me? Um, I really, I really tried to change it. I don't know what went wrong. <laughs> oh boy, I'm gonna have to figure this out. How to how to change it real quick. Um, edit stream info. There's the button. Wow, it does still say giving cheese to dragons. 
drawing a tarot card per week. This week, the magician. Draw stuff, drawing, okay. There we go. All right, got that figured out. <laughs> Thank you, babe, for uh, for pointing that out. Um, all right, so yeah, but this is this is sort of the style that I'm going for with the cards. I just sort of one day started um, combining sort of uh, like the the very like psychedelic imagery and psychedelic colors with also a little bit of like gothic spookiness in there. Um, so that's the style that I'm going to be going for with these cards. Lots and lots of really super bright colors. Um, lots of swoopiness. Uh, I changed the stream name to Drawing. So that should be good. All right, let's get started with this. Okay, so I've made a template for these. If you haven't seen um, The Fool, which you probably have, if you're here, it's probably because you saw me posting about the one that I already did. Um, but just in case you haven't, or you're catching up on this later, um, there's The Fool that I did, um, which, you know, I've been, I've been going for, again, like, it's, it's got a lot of darkness in there, but also, you know, the sort of bright color. With The Fool, you know, it was, you know, it's, it's a good thing to, uh, oh, the art channel is where all the art streams are. All right, hold on, hold on again, hold on again. Also, hi, Ninja Tea Cake. Thank you so much for following me for so long. Um... Category art. Art. There we go. Okay, art. There we go. All right, I fixed it. I fixed it. <laughs> okay. But yeah, thank you so much for following since the uh, Lesbian Pirates from Outer Space days. That was a while ago, and I'm always very happy when people remember my my older projects. Um, but you know. I very much love. Um, but yeah, so we've got the Fool, and, you know, obviously it's zero card. It is all about new beginnings. You know, you're starting on a brand new project. Um, you know, sort of the, the optimism of a new beginning. So we've got this sort of, you know, rainbow road that she's skating down that drops very suddenly. This is sort of the cliff. Um, that she's just blindly skating off of because, you know, she's so busy just smiling up at the sun to really look where she's going into this sort of dropping off into this sort of black void. Um, but, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing to not know where you're going. It, anything could be in that darkness. Um, I don't, I don't like how, you know, darkness is always portrayed as sort of a negative. Like sometimes it can just be unknown um you know it, it, it's the darkness of the inside of a wrapped present essentially um you know usually the fool is holding a white flower which stands for purity and innocence in this case i put a little white flower on her purse um so yeah it's it's definitely i i combined some of the traditional imagery while adding my own sort of flair on it there's a, there's a big black border just because, you know, if I ever do decide to get these printed, we need to have a, a trim line. So it's not going to be this much black on the outside. It's uh, completed. And I do try to begin projects as if I am going to eventually print them or publish them. At some point, as I learned from my early days of doing art, where I would save everything at 72 DPI and then later had to redraw pages and pages and pages and pages of comics when I went All right, so magician. Let's get started. Um, this works. I gotta remember where. Um, so <laughs> one of the reasons 
I've also been a little reluctant to do some art streams in the past is that for me, the process of sketching can definitely feel a little vulnerable. Um, you know, this is this is where I make the most mistakes and I, I get sort of nervous, sometimes a little embarrassed to show the process and all of the mistakes that I make along the way. But, um, you know, trying to get over that a little bit, you know, it, it's always good to work on your own uh, clean ups and insecurities. Um, I love showing off finished, polished work. Um, I'm not sure if people realize exactly how much, uh, like how many times I will draw the same line and undo it and draw the same line and undo it. Um, or like get halfway done with a sketch and be like, wow, the anatomy on this is so wonky. I need to start over or wow, I really hate this. I wish no one had ever seen this, including myself. Um, but you know, it's part of the process and you know, just watching streams of other artists and see, I, I hate, um, let's, 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 let's get back onto, onto video while I'm, you know, chatting and being vulnerable. I do hate how many streams I will watch like little gifts or short videos of people really starting the video once the sketch is done and then just like losing it or something and really just making it seem like artists just sort of get it right on the first try. Um, it, it can make you feel really like all the mistakes you're making are because you're a fuck up. And so I'm hoping that I guess by being vulnerable like this, I can help demystify the process. Um, yes, the real friends were the mistakes we made along the way because yeah, sometimes, um, I will make a mistake or do something unexpected and realize I like that a whole lot better. Um, and sometimes you do just have to get out the bad ideas just to like, sometimes you have an idea and you're like, yeah, this idea is going to be great. And you start drawing it and it's not great, but you need to like get it out of your system so that you can move on to, uh, something else that's going to be better. Um, you know, rough drafts are rough drafts. It's, it's so that you can get that out of the way and then do a final draft, which is going to be something better. Exactly. Happy little accidents. You know, we're, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not Bob Ross by any means, but <laughs> you know, there, there are going to be happy little accidents. And I think, I think the art turns out better for that. So, all right, without further ado, let's, let's just get into drawing, um, back to the drawing stream. Okay. So, Let's get started. So with the magician, um, you know, this is, this is all about, um, uh, you know, this is also new beginnings, new opportunities, um, you know, sort of the connection between the universe and the earth, um, you know, the, you know, the soul and the body essentially, um, you know, making your goals manifest. So it's, it's kind of building off of the fool a little bit. Um, and that's, that's also, you know, a really good thing to start with. I will, I will draw egg on stream at some point. I promise. I know, I know what y'all are really here for. I know my cat is, you know, Egg has seen the secrets of the universe and, uh, actually maybe Egg should be the magician. Um, <laughs> probably not though. I'm, uh, still not the best at drawing animals. Um, okay. So I usually sketch things, um, a light blue color. Um, let's see. Um, let's pull up. The, you know, the traditional card, the Rider weight deck, just for research, let's just look at this, um, here, where are we 
that. I'm not, I'm not going to like trace this or anything. So, yeah, we got this. So, you know, it also has, we're like trying to figure out what elements are kind of essential to keep the spirit of the card and what things can I sort of riff on, improvise, add my own spin. Um, so it looks like, you know, some of the, the main elements, we've got, you know, the four suits represented here. Um, infinity symbol above his head, you know, white robes of purity, red robes of knowledge. Um, and I, there's a lot of flowers here. I can definitely do some fun things with flowers. Um, I think I will probably, um, Um, oh yeah, also like one hand pointed up towards the sky, one hand pointed down at the earth. You know, again, the sort of connection between the, the physical and, and metaphysical. Um, yeah, we can do, we can do a lot of fun stuff. With um, yeah. Yeah, definitely probably going to have some, you know, psychedelic imagery, get a lot of, a lot of flowers. Yeah. Flower, power, flowers down here. Um, find myself. Have fun, make mistakes, get messy. too many flowers. I think I was, I was a little hard on this is always fairly straight on it's fairly stiff kind of character i i do like to uh add a little bit more fluidity to the poses of my characters and you know it doesn't have to be straight on smaller put it in the frame hi Lentilla I'm very happy that you're excited about the tarot deck I'm, I'm excited to be starting this project I'm, I'm excited to finally have like found the inspiration because it's 
it's one thing to be like, oh, I should do this. Like, you know, people have been asking for it. I bet you I could probably, like, make some money if I did it. But I'm not very money motivated. I'm really not. If I was money motivated, I would not have been super focused. Um, so I, I really am not good at taking on artistic projects that I'm not super, like, actually inspired on. Um, it's interesting when you see such a beautiful and busty, I guess it's interesting when you see a male character, but one, we don't know for uh, bodies in the gender. Um, but also, you know, I don't think female characters only show up when feminine. Anyways, the anatomy is pretty wonky right now. But I, I like to, again, keep characters fluid. So uh, it makes it too wonky. And clean it up later. Clean it up later. That's something that I always have to remind myself whenever I'm feeling bad about how a sketch is. Clean it up later. Robes. Don't have to draw legs. It's good to, to show the head. Lots of fluidity. I, I have not actually bought my own tarot deck. I Every time I go to order the one that I want, like there's there's a few that I have my eye on. Um, and they're all sold out. Or I just, uh, like I, I do want Izzy Rotman's uh, deck. Um, and I keep, I keep trying to like buy it directly from her. And then I keep getting back to uh, arrangements. Uh, but yeah, I, I was I, I got to see her like drawing a lot of cards that she did for that, and it was really cool. Um, I I grew up Catholic, so there's so much like I can't around. A lot of like sort of very drapey, raffy robes. I grew up looking at and stuff. Yeah, just end up getting you know. There's there's a bazillion lines in here. Um, at the end of the day. I'll probably know which lines I actually want to paint, which ones I just want to see. Sometimes I just like letting my flow draw a bunch of little lines to sort of flesh out the direction of the stuff. I think for the infinity symbol over their head, I'm actually going to kind of like put it in the background as like a decorative part. Something that kind of continues on. Ooh, that's looking fun. Well, the 
the decks that I really want right now um, are uh, Trungle's deck um, and Fyodor Pavlov's deck um, and Izzy Rapp's deck. Basically all my friends. <laughs> um, I, have, I have like multiple friends that have drawn really great decks and that's another reason why I really wanted this one or why I wanted to do this project. Um, see now, you know, this is, this is the kind of imagery that I'd want to, like, put one titty out. Sometimes you've got to have a titty out. Um, but, you know, let's, let's, let's not push our luck on this screen. And white. figure that out. This uh, music is a little less uh, chill stream. Like I wanted to have the thing about uh, random shuffle is you never quite know what you're gonna get. And this is also, you know, this is this is a Twitch a playlist that they put together themselves for like, hey, here's music you're allowed to stream uh, this is on Twitch, and it's definitely not like.
far. I'm pretty happy already. And nothing like the absolute despair that comes from a computer crashing or randomly deciding to restart. I love drawing hair, but fun goofy hair. If I Phones could cut in. I'm gonna get her over that. When I was younger, I would always like just to forget how round heads were like like the head would sort of end that far above the, the eyebrows um kind of like the idea of this character, especially because we're having them so androgynous. Um, maybe, maybe we go for that asymmetrical uh, undercut. Alright. Let's add an ear in there. Oh, Kind of made the decision that this character is kind of gotta have one of the one of the official non-binary haircuts. Um, as with every project I do, shit's gonna keep better. <laughs> like. Hair, hair is really good to show you um, in part of life. So in which case, uh, we should probably make sure that robes also have movement. Flowing. This Gravity. Bottom. Uh, 
All right. Where are we fitting these other essential elements? Oh, blue. I mean, they could be floating. This is a magician already getting a little anti-gravity. Yeah. I've gotten better at drawing swords because of watching so much Forged and Fire. Uh, I the game that is. Like, our game. Binge watch Forged and Fire. Now I can draw swords more than I can draw swords. Oh, yeah. I always draw my goblins. I don't necessarily have to. I just want to do that. Why not a teacup? Definitely like take some background elements and sort of swirl it around in here to kind of tie these to the thing so it's not just, you know, I do want them to be floating, but uh, I know when it's a little deeper. the sword to be bigger now. Okay. We just gotta... That coin. Pentacles coins. I've never heard both of them. Cool. All right. Sketch, you know, can definitely add some things on later as I start inking and find 
new ideas that you guys want to do. Group that together, call it catch, put it down to 30%. And, you know, since I am going to print this, I'm not just using, you know, I, I'm using print black, CMYK black. Um, important to establish from the get-go. Although I do put my ink on a separate page. But, you know, change it if I need to. All right. So, we're working back to print. Flowers. You know what? I want them to be pretty circular, um, but with a little bit of organicness to it. So what I'm going to do for these is Draw some perfect circles, but then I'm going to trace over them. is
things I just realized, like, the nice thing about doing this on screen is that I'm less likely to get distracted and just, like, wander off to do something else. Uh, I'm not just gonna, like, end up watching the screen. Um, cool. So... Now you don't have to be androgynous. Oh. But it does seem like we're representing Especially when it is something like this. Hey, this is a non-binary person. Um, also, sharp cheekbones. The audio keeps cutting in and out a little. Huh. I wonder why. Am I just not talking loud enough for like the first time in my entire life? Is that what's going on? I guess I can talk louder. I hate drawing people. Eyebrows are sisters, not twins, but you want to turn up the gain on the mic. Let's see if that works better. All right. We're sisters, not twins, but we do want them to be a little bit more. There we go. We just want them to be aligned on the brow bone. Ooh, hey. Hi there. Get your number. Hell yes. Uh. chunks oh good I'm glad the sound is be kind of hard using the same mic between like different computers and different stream setups because we usually we've been doing a lot of like comfy cozy couch streams uh lately which has been really nice um sort of Alex and I sitting on the couch together playing games and 
making each other laugh, usually making the stream laugh too. Lots of terrible, terrible dad jokes. Um, but that sort of requires a different setup than being in my office, sitting a lot closer. Yeah, we've been having fun with the couch streams. Been playing Skyrim. I'm feeling every single cheese in that game. Anytime I come across a cheese, I have to feel it. It's just you know, you can play you can play games like Skyrim so many different ways. And I'm not going for, for realism. I do like, I mean, this is a very delicate wrist. Yeah, Egg, egg makes it into the streams a lot when we stream from the couch. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait on this hand because I actually have to, I got to sort of sketch that in detail and uh yeah that's not that's not where I want the hand to be right now um but I'm having fun inking so I'm gonna stick with the inking for right now all right oh so many lines and now I do have to determine which ones I keep and which ones were just Thing. Just playing experimental improvisational jazz and then the next day trying to transpose it uh, to sheet music so you can play it. Sometimes I just gotta sit for a minute and look at the drawing as a whole. You know, make sure lines are staying balanced. Like these lines are very thick, um, and some of these other lines are you know, a little bit uh, monotonous in their weight. So yeah, just make that a little. Yeah, that looks a little better. Add some weight over here. The way I learned to draw lines was that um, things in the foreground get thicker lines and things. Find it. We're not really, it, it's getting flat colors. I can add a little bit of shading just with line weight. Yeah, that's that's looking a little bit more visually appealing. I mean, I still do sometimes draw characters with their with their hands behind their backs or in pockets, um, or covered by hair, or you know, clothes. Like honestly, sometimes the reason I'm drawing such like crazy hair all over the place is because it's covering something that I don't want to draw. Um, but I did, I, I've actually, I feel like I'm okay at drawing hands. I spent most of sixth grade just drawing hands. Um, so I've never been quite as intimidated by them as a lot of other artists are. Um, since I did sort of decide early on, like, hey, this is going to be something that I want to learn and be good at. Um, but it also, sometimes it's time consuming and I just don't want to. Yeah.
Definitely getting a little like muka with this. Oh, yeah. Hymns. a good shoulder Ooh. and just uh ah! come on get out of your system okay and we'll just lose sensitivity sometimes this computer has given me so many troubles You know, if they're non-binary, they're not going to have a female nipple. Although Twitch does, I think, specifically say female presenting, which is, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of bullshit. Although I know it's usually not, you know, it's not really Twitch determining the sort of things there's there's been so many uh laws passed recently um that sort of force companies to censor nudity and sexuality like i i don't know how twitter gets around it um when basically every other site has had to comply with uh things like pasta and sesta putting these just absolutely bonkers horrible rules on everybody online.
All right, let's 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 work on these hands. Okay. Let's, eh. Hands. Magic does spit on the gender binary. Uh, like, I, I, I don't understand how someone could, you know, believe in magic and then also believe in a gender binary. Um, like, I feel like magic requires a certain amount of creativity and thinking outside. natural laws are. I have only three fingers, isn't it? more detail. <laughs> Honestly, robes are just a really good way to kind of... They're, they're unisex, you know? Right, everyone in the Bible is non-binary. You know what? I can always kind of clean up some elements before I go to print. Nothing saying that whatever I finish today has to go in the finished deck. So if I later on get into a mood where I'm like, I really want to draw more perfect hands, I can go back. I think I'm satisfied with these hands. I guess got a line weight on the fingers is a little bit. There we go. Okay. That's Let's finish up. 
robes, draw the whole thing. negative space down there. I'm gonna draw. Well, these robes do have pockets. The thing, of, the thing about non-binary clothing is that you do know how to search or robes that have pockets. Like the dress I'm wearing right now, it's got pockets. It's, you know, it's a very femme dress, but it has pockets. So uh, that makes it, that makes it non-binary gear. Um, let's draw these. Oh, for what? Oh, the, uh, the music has actually, uh, gotten appropriate for the stream. Eternity clothes not have pockets like geez. Yeah, what is a uterus if not nature's pocket? Unfortunate fire right 
tight at the end. This is worthy. Sword. I love it. All right. Oh, you can't hear me over the music. Oh no, I turned the music up too high. Oh no. Okay. Is that better? I need to get this mic. I need to. I need to sit closer to the mic. I think. Let's scooch a little closer. Okay. Okay. I'm not used to being told that someone can't hear my voice. I'm usually, uh. Hearing that I am uh, way too loud for every situation. So, uh, this is a very novel concept. You know what? Leave that alone. We don't have to overwork things. All right, teacup time. Oh, I don't like. Alex didn't really mess up my settings because I'm working on my computer. Usually when we do streams, we're going on his computer um, with his settings. Um, and this is this is on my computer. Really, the, um, the problem is that I never really finished working on my audio settings um, because we mostly use Alex's computer for streams. Um, is that on my... I'm seeing little speckles of something that... Oh. I mean, we can still blame Alex for all kinds of things. Um, actually, no, he did. He did mess with. He did mess with my audio a bunch when I was doing uh, the cheese stream on New Year's Eve. So yeah, we can blame Alex for this. It's Alex's fault. 1v1 me, Alex. Yo. Uh, what am I going to put on this? Oh, that's not... Hey, there we go. That's a cup. Probably put something on this cup. I gotta finish drawing this sword. Oh, that's gonna involve straight lines. I'm gonna draw some straight lines underneath. Again, I want it to be organic and look and as it is, but I also don't want things to be like super crazy. Oh no, I hate drawing straight lines. Oh no. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Okay, find a straight line. Nope. I want to try and do it in as few strokes as possible so that things don't look too... You know, it's a little wiggly. Straight lines, bane of my existence. I like doing, I like doing swoops. This is what I like. Not straight line swords. Oh man, doing like the ten of swords is going to absolutely fucking kill me. Trying to draw that many straight lines in something. But one thing that I can actually do to sort of make these lines appear a bit straighter is I'm going to take, I'm going to take these guidelines and I'm actually going to, uh, use them. Let's make guidelines in color and then add a stroke to them. That big. Just big enough. Yeah. There we go. I do want the color to be PMYK black. I'm a perfectionist about little tiny details and then other details I'm just like, ah, good enough. I have no idea how I choose. Alright, we got a sword. We got a sword. I think it's looking wonky just because... Ooh, I like that a little better too. Honestly, I, I, I truly might just draw one sword and just, I'm just going to take this one sword that I'm currently drawing and I'm just going to copy and paste that into every single sword drawing uh, that I do. Because why not? Um, I did the work. All right, so now reduce my line weight a little bit fill in some of these details this Curvy lines, eat them up. I will say, so I, I have definitely drawn some tarot cards before for a uh, spectacle. Um, just because, you know, the, the main character of that is a, a fortune teller in a circus and she reads tarot. And so I've used a lot of that imagery for those books too. 
And so one of the covers, or I think it was issue 15, was um, Six of Cups. And you can bet that I drew one cup and I copied and pasted that one cup. Um, Cause yeah, I did, I, I wanted it to be consistent. I think it looked, I don't think anyone looked at that cover and was like, oh, they just copied and pasted this one cup. Well, uh, take away their artist license. That, ha that has always been a little bit of a fear in my mind is that like people are going to see my process and then just be like, oh, you actually do everything wrong. Um, how dare you call yourself an artist when you draw like this, like your finished projects look great. But now that we know your process, no, go to jail. Um, I don't know why artists have a lot of hang ups about things. You do put, you know, a piece of your soul into what you make and it's it's worrisome how the world is going to receive it oh, a little hair coming out this thing is i have this haircut and my hair is always just sort of flying out from various places Sweet, we have hair. So picky about some of these little lines. Again, other lines. I don't care. I don't know why I decide this line must be perfect and this other line can be whatever it wants. This is all cut off. And you know, so the fool I drew, you know, in very modern clothes with roller skates, and this is definitely a lot more traditional garb. And so there's not really going to be any like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I mean, you can still wear robes like this in modern day if you want. It's not common, but there's this. I'm not trying to do like a, oh, everything is modernized or anything like that. It's really just like, what do I think is pretty for this one? And sort of tying it thematically together with the color choice. And I'm going to leave the robe without, or the, uh, the tunic underneath without too much detail to it, just so that this sort of swirly robe full of detail will not sort of get lost or overwhelming, I guess I should say. You want to have these elements separate and keep it in the background. So yeah, a few lines in here. Like, 
I've almost noticed, so I switch from a, uh, like, first generation Cintiq to one that's about a year old um, over the summer. And this has more pen sensitivity, but I almost don't like it. Like, my lines get so much more wiggly um, because they're picking up all the, like, slight tremors in my hands. I think I need to turn the pen sensitivity down because my lines, I feel like they're, they're so much, uh, so much more wiggly now with the, with the newer setup. Maybe my hands have been tired. I'm tired of this thing. <laughs> One of the nice things about, like, thinking about my future as an artist, um, one of the nice things about technology is knowing that, like, okay, say I do, like, develop a really strong tremor, um... I, I could still illustrate, um, and there's, you know, technology in digital drawing that can accommodate for that. Um, so it does, it does give me confidence in the longevity of my career. I had a really bad wrist injury several years ago that got me more conscious of like, oh, this is a very physical job and, you know, physical things can happen to me that make it impossible to do my job and, you know, how, how long am I going to be able to do this job? I, you know, always sort of just assumed, yeah, I can be 80 and still producing work at the same rate. And probably not. And also, you know, I used to draw for 14 hours a day most days of the week. I didn't really have much of a social life. I didn't really have a lot of other interests. Um, and being forced to take time off from drawing due to this wrist injury, I was kind of like, oh, there is a lot more to life than drawing. And I don't want to go back to being as productive as I once was. Um, Going on. All right, now we just gotta do this background. And then I'll work on colors. And I'll probably end up changing things too as I color and discover, like, oh. Especially when I'm trying to make things consistent with the other cards. Um, and you know, it's going to be over black. Um, symmetrical. Let's make this.
one to be smooth, not wonky. I'm changing the music again. I don't necessarily dislike this kind of music, I just, uh, it's not what I'm... Yeah, let's chill. Here we go. That's a lot better. Yeah. I need some... This is, this is a lot more in the, in the zone of where my mood is. All right. Here to adjust my sound or fight people or just look at what I'm doing? Uh, might fight people. Might fight people? Yeah. Yeah? I'm gonna be fiddle. Yeah. All right, fiddle. Now it's picking up my desktop audio. I know. Okay. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, okay. Does it sound better, you guys? It should. You see the, yeah. the lower levels kind of picking it up more. Oh, okay. I see. Hello. 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 Yeah. Chad, is this better? Say hi. Hi. Could you actually get me some more water so that my throat yeah. stays, stays moist? Thank you, my babe. All right. Okay, that sounds better. Yay, you did it, babe! All right. Cool. Sorry that the uh, sound was not great for a lot of this stream. Oh yeah, we can turn up the music too. It's now that you can hear me, I can turn up the music. Cool. All right. I'm not sure I like this overlapping thing, actually. Let's undo all of that. Do you want to... Something more like that, I think, is what I'm thinking of, but not exactly that. Oh, it's going to be tricky get the curves that I want to go for. Actually, you know what? So maybe just do it like the hair. Or is that just going to compete with the hair? I got to I got to make these lines spaced out enough that uh, it doesn't compete with the hair that's right in front of it. So we're thinking, yeah, definitely more broad. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm going to be really picky on this part because it's going to be like a major background element. Well, actually, I mean, it doesn't have to stay. I can, I almost kind of like the idea of it, like, melting a little bit. Much like my uh, bottom bar on the stream. I want to bring those kind of swoopies into it. So yeah, we're going to do a little bit of uh, meltiness in here. Digger around. Overlaps, not tangents. Yeah, I kind of like this is just like infinity sort of melting into things. Or like the metaphysical bleeding into reality. The imagination. down. How often do, we and Alex, do me and Alex stream in the afternoon so you can put this on his background at work and occasionally trash talk him? Um, so Alex has a nine to five job, which makes it probably pretty hard for him to uh, stream uh, during the work days. I'm, I'm definitely going to um, do more workday streams and 
you know, you can you can definitely still trash talk Alex during these things because uh, I think from the, from the sounds of it, he's got this stream on while he works and he can see what you guys are saying about him and uh, he will he's he's definitely able to you know be in the chat even if he can't uh, directly like stream during the workday. So yeah, I. I, I know that roasting Alex is a lot of fun. Make sure to ask Alex about the Japanese hand job weekend. Well, um, I will make sure to do that. I'm very curious now. Um, I know he's never been to Japan, so I'm not certain what I'm going to find out. Uh, but he seems properly concerned which is great um but yeah everyone is welcome to roast my boyfriend he is very roastable it's one of my favorite things to do with him oh heck yes i'm loving these drippies and this was not in the sketch this is something that just uh that just sort of manifested while drawing other lines. And that's this kind of stuff that gets me so excited. Like, look at this. I probably don't need the sketch anymore because I'm, I'm going sort of off plan. But cheese, a pool, and a lot of guys. It was the gayest, not gay, but kind of gay thing ever. All right. Wow. I am... I... I very much can't wait to hear the entire story of <laughs> this i you, you had me at at cheese uh oh i read that at first as a pool of cheese um which sounds like a, a great thing to me i'm imagining just like a swimming pool full of cheese Which is, you know, definitely one of my bigger fantasies. I'm probably on Friday going to uh, do another cheese stream. I've got a really good cheese that I want to show y'all. And, uh, yeah, do, do some, do some introduction to this cheese and then do some do some game streaming on Friday. We've been we've been streaming most Friday nights um, these days. That's been sort of our Friday night thing. We usually start streaming around like 8:30 Central Time, because that gives us, gives us enough time to make and eat dinner. We eat kind of late. Or more like I just take so long to make elaborate meals because cooking is, you know, one of my, one of the things that's bringing me a lot of joy in the pandemic. All right, I don't have to really do too much more in this zone because it's going to get cut off anyways, but sneak a little bit more in there. I can sneak one more little bit. We, we can we can definitely get many cheese all the time. You are speaking my love language right now. Uh, but I got this I got this really fancy schmancy cheese. My, one of my favorite cheeses um, released a, a special edition for the holidays that I'm very excited to try. Yeah, I think this is looking really good. I'm really excited about this. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to leave the background black just because like with the pool, I had, you know, a lot of, a lot of black in that. I've got a black border. Um, we'll see. I'm going to, I'm going to definitely do some more of this infinity background until maybe about here. Okay. I think, I think I know how I'm going to balance this. I, so at the start of the pandemic, um, 
grocery stores could not keep up with tortilla demand in Chicago. And I was about like four seconds away from uh, getting the supplies to make tortillas at home. Um, and then the next time we went in, they did manage to have enough tortillas that time. And now we, I think the la every time we go grocery shopping, we get like four packs of tortillas, but I, I would still like to at least learn how to make uh, fresh tortillas. I made, I made naan from scratch, garlic naan during the pandemic. And that was so good. Um, and pretty easy actually. And then I made naan for my friends and I made like 47 times the amount of naan that any party would ever need. I used to be a really terrible baker. I, I, I've been a good cook for a while um, because one, one of my first jobs ever was running cameras on a cooking show. And so that basically required watching um, a, a cooking show. Alex, did you just subscribe to our own channel, you dork? Alex, you dork. Well, thank you for the sub, Dapper Cadaver, a.k.a. Alex, half of this channel. He's got his own personal channel. Yay, I'm glad the audio sounds good. Thanks for doing that. And also, chat, we've got we've got uh, an emote. It is Egg. Because she is so cute. We've got Egg Champ now, so uh, feel free to use that. Subscribe if you want to use Egg Champ on other people's streams. We love our baby girl so much. My accent's coming through so much! I don't have an accent. I sound like the TV. I... Chat, do I have an accent? Because I... Alex makes fun of me so much. Anytime I talk to my parents on the phone, especially my dad, uh, Alex makes fun of me for having an accent. But I think... Thank you. I didn't say thank you, guys. I said thank you, guys. Although saying you guys is definitely a like Midwestern thing that, you know, I am, I am trying to break the habit of saying you guys in favor of something more gender neutral, but it's, it's hard because I, I truly did grow up where you guys was gender neutral, um, where everyone was guys. It, it truly is you know, a, a regional thing that's that's hard to shake. Um, I'm working on it, but I guess I'm I'm just so very Midwestern, and it can't be helped. I am loving all of these drippy bits. This is exactly what this needed. Wow, look at that. It's <sighs> trying to keep things sort of flowing with this element. All right, that might be enough infinity. Um, and then I think 
What I'm going to do, actually, is I do want to have I do want to have some big dark elements. Um, so essentially, I'm going to sort of have a light shining on all of these things, and then black in the background. Behind everything. I think that's good. Man, I really like this. I'm really happy with this. Cool. I think I've got it all inked up. Alex, what did you just look up on YouTube? How to make a cheese sword? That's... That, that is a good suggestion. Oh, Alex just looked up sad guitar chords. Al Alex, every guitar chord you play sounds sad. Because you're the one playing it. And you're a big old emo boy. Alright, so I haven't been in, in this art series, you know, like, using this. This was sort of the first thing. I drew this on a whim and I was like, wow, I love how this turned out so much that I want to do stuff sort of riffing off this look. Um, so, uh, yeah, like, we're not doing, like, natural skin tones. Um, so, but first off, like, one of the sort of defining features of the, this card is that the robe is red and the tunic is white. Um, you know what? Selecting all of this individually is going to take forever, so. Um, and I don't want to do necessarily bright red red. So for my color swatches, all of these colors down here in the corner, um, I set these up. Every single one is going to be made up of 25% increments of C, M, Y, and or K. Um, because I think they print really nicely. It's um, so like, yeah, this color. Oh, can I show... Well, okay, so selecting that, and then you can see this one is made up of 25% cyan, 100% magenta. Um, I just think that it makes for really strong, bold, easy to print colors. Um, and again, this is something that I'm going to print, so I want to be working in CMYK. Um, so I could just go for, like, you know, very... Here's 100% magenta, 100% yellow gives you a sort of red red um but i don't i don't really want to do that shade i'm thinking more of this uh yeah 50 percent yellow make it a little bit pinker um but it's still going to read as red within the context of this um yeah let's just keep doing the robe to zoom in.
think I got all of it. There we go. So we got the robe. I am going to let's see. I'm, I'm gonna put I'm gonna do a lot of layers for coloring just because it makes it easy for if I decide like, oh, I want this element to be a totally different color, um, I can just change it a lot easier by just changing the entire layer rather than having to select exactly what I want to change. Um for the hair, I'm just going to make it purple for now. Um, I can decide later if I want to keep it that color. I'm essentially flatting my own work right now. Which is not something I ever actually do for comics. Um, I already know what color I want everything to be in spectacle. I'll, I'll have to draw like a dummy page of spectacle on stream sometime and show y'all how I do the colors for that. Cause I did, you know, it, I, I developed a very like streamlined, um, streamlined way of coloring that, that a lot of people have commented on, um, that it, that it looks good. It was it was something that I did just because the sheer amount of pages that I'm doing, um, I needed to be able to go fast. And I I used to think that I wasn't particularly good at colors for some reason. Um, but when I started doing this technique that I do for spectacle, I started getting a lot of comments about my coloring. Um, so I'll have to show that to you guys someday. Use guys. All right. Oh, I kind of really like that purple. This is, this is one of my favorite shades of purple. All right. I think I'm gonna have a lot of yellows and oranges in the background. So for a skin tone, and yeah, we're keeping the robe white because that's kind of another one of the elements that is sort of essential to the character or iconic to the character, I guess I would say. Um, so maybe like a blue or green skin tone. Let's just try this for now. I'm not sure I love that, but just for the sake of getting something on there that I can change later. Yeah, maybe that needs to have a bit more yellow in it. And see, to change the whole layer, I'm just going to lock the transparency for this layer, and then I can put a totally different color over it. That's kind of looking a bit too Incredible Hulk. Um, thank you, Illicoder, for the follow. Welcome. Working on the colors for this tarot card. Maybe, okay, I think... That's a little less saturated. I don't know, maybe not green, maybe more blue. Ooh, I think blue. Blue might be good. I think that makes those other colors pop. Although I don't think I want necessarily just cyan, maybe cyan with a little bit of magenta in it. I guess that's more purple. Thanks for the follow, Lintilla. Maybe I could go a darker color. Hmm. Maybe that like really light green. And I think this green has, yeah. It's 
cyan, yellow, and equal in equal parts. What if I did do 50% cyan? A little bit more blue. A bit more aqua. Uh, no, I think I like this. And we can always change it. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop messing with that because it all depends on like how the, the background turns out. Um because yeah again looking at this like we it, it's sort of iconic for having this bright yellow background um so i do want to bring some of that in you know i was you know, i was gonna have this be bright yellow but the coin and the metal of the sword are going to be yellow so maybe do that in more of like a peachy hue and bring some bright yellow up into the uh dripping infinity um oh, let's try that no i like that better okay or i could just have this be a light shade of yellow yeah maybe that works better what's this made up of i just want this to be more yellow no that's too much okay leave it at that um let's work on this infinity symbol so what happened here that should be I'm just gonna cover that up with black that's better okay all right infinity symbol Probably leave the symbol itself white so it pops. We're gonna put a lot of different yellows and oranges behind it. I, just, I always have uh, this function set to uh, gradient rather than paint bucket. So I, I do end up doing a lot of gradients. Um, so yeah, we're just going to fill this in with a bunch of different shades of yellow. Actually, a big fan of straight up yellow yellow. I do always want to have a little bit of magenta in there too. Oh no, that's the color I just used there. I just yellow is not a real color in a way. It's uh Thank you, Team Bates, for the follow. But yeah, like our, our eyes are not actually able to truly perceive yellow. We just sort of uh, see that there's a color between green and red, and our brain makes something up for it. Yellow, yellow. 
probably the strength card I should draw, Varjima. I should. Varjima is the character I play in every video game that I can custom create a character. She is a tank. Cool. Wow, I'm really loving this. This is making me very excited. Hell yeah. Let's see. I'm going to come back to the drips. I'm going to work on these flowers. So I do want to have, like, a lot of rainbow colors in here. So we haven't really done any blue. Let's get, I want kind of like a teal blue. Yeah. And bring a slightly different shade of purple. Or is that the same purple? I'm gonna do maybe a lot more cool colors down here to contrast with the the warmth coming from above. Yeah, psychedelic is is what I'm going for here. It's definitely inspired by psychedelic imagery. pull a little bit of the orange from up here. Oops, I turned the layer off. There we go. I'm bringing yellows from up above into the middle of the flowers. Although, okay, I gotta be aware of this. I was gonna leave one of these flowers white, but that's gonna make it hard to read that. So, we gotta make it a color. Um, yeah, maybe what kind of color? Maybe a different shade of purple. this little bit with maybe this dark purple. We want the text to be legible. Yeah, it's a lot better. Alright, gotta finish with the drips and the objects. I feel like I don't want to necessarily leave the robe like white white, like paper white. Um... At least I might put a gradient on it. I do put some gradients into parts of these things. Um, like, I'm probably going to actually have this background be more of a gradient. Looks like all these objects are, like, getting abducted by aliens. But I don't dislike that. Um, yeah, I just, I want to figure out the robes, do some sort of very pale color. Okay, let's, let's do all these objects. 
so... Oh, looks like I forgot to select that for... orangey color, something like that, yeah, and I'm gonna color this heart pink just to give it magical girl vibes. selected all these things when I really should just do that. That part's easy enough. Alright. Sort of, I guess. Should be kind of a metal color. Um. Oh, that's so cute! It's so cute and magical girl. it though just to make it you know we are we are trying to go for for goth looking stuff too it's supposed to be a combination of goth and psychedelic oh, oh i accidentally selected that um, got the lines rather than the inner bit that i was trying to do What rainbows and darkness? Yeah, we can put some shading on this coin too. Oh, come on. like that part of the screen. Why? Why those pixels? Why those pixels? All right, just gotta let it get it out of its system. Okay. Oh my god. There. All right, I guess it, that's my sign to not overwork that, I guess. Um, let's try and get some frustrated with Wacom's drivers right now. Oh, 
know what, if I just select this, then it won't go outside of where I want it to be. Let this side of the sword be mostly dark. strokes. All right, seems like the driver has fixed itself. Call that good. All right, so let's put a yellow star in there just to sort of match what I got going on with these. colors do we have going on that we can bring some of that pink. I do like that pink. Maybe this purple. I do like that purple. I'm gonna go with the pink because there's also pink in the sword. And then we gotta ruin it with this wand that's gonna have little baby green leaves, but it's okay. Actually, who says they have to be green? This is this is psychedelic, and I'm doing whatever colors I want. Um, at the very least, I can take this blue green, pop it up in there. You don't want to use every single color every single time in your work, and then end up with this huge mishmash. A limited color palette even if you're doing rainbows you still have to limit like what tones your rainbows are going to be um otherwise everything gets really muddy all right looks like work on the drips add some gradients into things go from there I'm just gonna keep the drips sort of the same colors. Oh yeah, we got we got a lot of colors going out now. Let's see. That color should be good. Oops, nope, don't want to do that there. All right. Lots and lots of little details. Just notice that this little bit in there should be black. Got it. Okay. Or was it coming off of? No, no. It can be black. Sure. 
I don't want the same color to touch itself in these swirls. Which can get tricky. <laughs> when you have so many things sort of converging. This one, well, okay, it's gonna have to be this bright yellow, yellow. You are stuck in a maze. That can go in there. You are stuck in a maze. Ooh. This touches so many different colors. Yeah, it's sort of touching there, but I don't care. Is that all the drips? Yeah. Oh, that's looking cool. Yeah, it's looking real cool. All right, let's address this robe. I think if I just do it like the same sort of pale yellow, it'll read as kind of like a creamy white. Hopefully. least I can add some decorative elements to it. See, I think I want to do the skin tone a bit darker to pop out from that. Yeah, to make that look more white. Hi, babe! I'm drawing now. You're drawing now? It's me, drawing man. Yeah? So good at drawing, chat. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, it's turning out good. Wow. Yeah. Hell yeah. What part is that? Uh, the magician. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm liking I'm liking that skin tone. And it's it's sort of a lighter version of this blue flower. So that kind of ties that together. Yeah, that's that's a good tone, I think. And it it does make this very pale yellow look almost white. And so I think it can pass as a white robe. Um for the sake of the the symbolism of the card. Cool. Um, so for the skin, I usually like to add a little bit of shading just with basic gradients. Just to add some interest sort of taking the the infinity symbol as almost being like the uh light source it's not getting into full shading by any means actually it's on a locked transparency anyways so some basic shading keep it from looking too flat so make this head look round cool I'm gonna call that good probably will color in the lips a different color but gonna get some other elements figured out first um, we're gonna put some different red tones in with in there now we can almost go to pink so got some pink in there add in some more like actual red red Even 
need some some highlights of a much lighter shade. because it will tie it to the infinity. Alright, and then the hair. Again, I'm going to just add some slightly different shades of purple in here. Just some highlights. Okay, that is the color that I've got. It does kind of look like the, the illustration I did of Pug Pygmalion, because, yeah, he was also wearing a white tunic with red robe. He was kind of a magician, but that character was a dick in that comic, and I don't know. Is it wrong to think that your art, the people you're drawing, are like mega babes? And you would smooch them if you could. Because I'm just like, yeah, this person's a mega babe and I don't want them to be an asshole. <laughs> there's, oh, there's just this tiny little bit in here that I'm just going to fill in with black. This one. Actually, I'm almost thinking it's it's just too close to the yellow besides it. I think I'm going to do just like a very pale, whoa, a very pale blue. So actually, I, I might, every now and then I go outside of my thing of only using, uh, 25% uh, increments of CMYK. Um, but sometimes you just need a different color. Yeah. I want it to be like a sort of bluish gray. on that too. Drawing instant crushes is kind of a perk of the job. It really is. And I don't understand artists who deny that. All right, let's... I'm going to take some of this that. I like that a lot. 
is this is this the card right here i think this might be the card i think at the very least i think i want to call this good for now i don't want to necessarily i don't want to re or, or overwork it um and sometimes sometimes i need to take like a day or two or even a week or two to sort of let art sit um and approach it with some fresh eyes later where i can you know think oh actually what if i did this um so yeah i think we are calling that one good that's gonna be the magician um again like if i i mean hopefully i do manage to actually finish this whole series and end up with a tarot deck that i can uh get printed and you know in in the case of that um you know there might be there might be minor changes made between uh what you see here and what gets printed um but yeah i think that's what we're gonna call it for now um yeah thank you everyone for joining while i drew this um y'all kept me on task like the fact that i couldn't just like get up and walk around and decide like oh maybe i'll fiddle around on the base or maybe i'll you know make myself a lunch that takes me like three hours or you know or just watch tv instead like i stayed on task this whole time and so i got this done in you know two and a half hours and that's great that's definitely something that i can do every week and uh have it have a tarot deck in a year and a half um i will definitely look into um finding ways to make prints of individual cards. Um, it'll probably be like a print on demand thing. Um, I am just not the best at sending prints through the mail. They always end up getting kind of scrunched unless you like buy a book along with it and I can kind of slide it inside the book to keep it safe. Um, so yeah, probably find a print on demand place to put these up. Um, but yeah, I think I think this is going to be great. Um, thanks once again to everyone for joining us. Thanks for all the new follows. Um, thank you, Alex, for subscribing to your own channel. <laughs> um, yeah, I will see you guys uh, next week. My store, my store is still down for the time being just while um i finish up some kickstarter orders trying to get those out um the post office is still pretty backed up from the holidays um and my own shipping uh backlog um is just backed up from the holidays so i'm waiting to catch up from that before i put my web store back up um so i'll, I'll probably get a bunch more of those out this week if you did uh back the kickstarter the uh the filth kickstarter over the summer i am uh getting those shipped out um as quick as i can um it just takes a little while because i have to physically bring them all to the post office they won't come pick them up and i have hundreds of packages to send out um but yeah we'll do that soon i am going to go look into some print on demand places that i can send this up and yeah i will i will announce on twitter um, where you can get um, these prints and I'll let you know when my store is back up. Um, yeah, I mean this this is my job. I gotta I gotta tell y'all how to buy things from me for sure. Um, but yeah, you can also support us by subscribing. Um, you know, it's definitely paying small bills right now, which is cool. Um, if you've got Amazon Prime, you can sub for free, um, which is neat. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go look into some print on demand places.